growing up, right, you know, you used to watch the movies and you would see, not necessarily London, but like places like New York, that's a 24-7 city, right? And then I had the same impression about London. I guess that ultimately you move to a place because you don't know what's going to come from it. There's an element of surprise. I think that anyone that goes somewhere knowing all the answers, um, you're kind of missing out on all the joys of of relocating. So, yeah, I, um, I'll get whatever, whatever happens, really. And that's a good thing. Just knowing that you never know who you're going to meet, I think that's the most exciting thing. Um, like, of course, you, you go to similar places and you recognise people, but just knowing that I will probably meet someone new every day is really exciting. We're a little community in here, so we, we started having our own dialect in a way to communicate and we have inside jokes, so it is, it, it is part of living here and being part of the community, so yeah, it is quite important. I think it's good to live with a lot of people because there is always someone around if you need uh, help with something, if you, need, uh, if you need a printer or someone to open the door for you or some food or a company to go to a beer. So I think that's a really nice thing about living with a lot of people. The constant energy that I feel in the house, a mixture of, I mean, we have a movie director, we have a game developer, we have an actress, we have I guess we have a guru in, in our midst, and uh, of course we have a DJ, Sam, and uh, I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just the most eclectic, interesting mixture of people, I think. You cannot get that if you're living a white-collar, 9-to-5, uh, daily grind kind of a life, and uh, that's been the greatest and I think the most valuable thing that I've uh, gained from Batavia. I don't think I can ask for anything, anything more, really. I don't know, it's sort of like another day, another incredibly funny situation. Um, I've, all, I've lived in communal um, sort of student ha halls for, this is my fifth year in them, and this is actually the most privacy I've had in five years. Um, I've always had at least one other person living in the same room as me. Um, so the, it was very odd at first, sort of uh, not having, it sounds creepy, but not having someone else sort of like breathing at night in the room, it's oddly comforting when you've, you know, done it for a couple of years. But um, I think we just have a really interesting set of characters living here. Uh, I use that word loosely because we are real people, not characters. However, um, incredibly different walks of life, incredibly different uh, generations, um, backgrounds, and Somehow we can still hang out in the kitchen for four hours a day. Uh, I think my favorite memories are always related to talking in the kitchen. I love being there with other uh, flatmates and we, all, we, we always talk so passionately about what we think of, you know, social themes or things we want to change in the world. Or it, It's just really nice to be there talking with people, interacting and getting to know someone's opinion or uh, you know exchanging ideas about it and I think that's that's my all my memories are always related to the conversation conversations I had individually or in a group order in the kitchen. We have uh, people from East Asia, Taiwan, China and India and they all cook different kinds of food and I like to eat different kinds of food so um, those are very good times for me and, and we are quite happy when we are making meal for each other and we enjoy these meals together. When you have to live with people for um, so long in such like an intense environment um, with all the pressures of university and everything that everyone else has to go through, um, you kind of force yourself, well not even, you, you're, you're put into a situation where you have to make these sort of um, unique relationships um, because you end up depending on um, them in the same way that you would your family and so you kind of build a similar dynamic. I don't know if camaraderie is the right word but it is a it is a better place I would say than other holder residents for people to mix 
mingle with each other and bond with each other because uh, other places which are more say more posh the people have single rooms with attached everything attached kitchenettes or attached uh, en suite rooms they almost get into a shell and you almost don't know your neighbors uh, I'm kind of used to the whole living together uh, I've done it for four years now so there's no new challenge that I can think of uh, but it's always the whole the sharing of space it's um, if, you, if you want to go in a, if you're in a rush in the morning you can be dead sure that someone's in the shower and you're saying hell of a long time uh, there's if people are drunk and come later and back late home I have the staircase going straight by my room so I'll hear everyone coming and going and stuff like that but it's it's minor things, it's not anything you think of on a daily, daily basis. I guess what's changed is just that we've got to know each other more and it's like, that sounds terrible to say. <laughs> I, I think it's because as time has gone on, um, you know, you do, I, I, think the, I just think this is an unusual living environment where it's like you wouldn't have 19 or brothers and sisters you know, not that we're all that close, you know, but it's like you wouldn't have, you wouldn't live so closely with this many people. And I think that that's an unusual environment. First of all, there's not enough space, like a common room or a living room. Whereas if you lived in a normal house or flat, you would have, because the kitchen is not always the, the, the best space to hang out because people may want to cook, you know, do their own thing. I mean, it's still a very confined space. You always end up stepping on each other's toes at some point, so it's definitely important to know kind of when to step back, when to retreat, when to sort of take some time out and kind of be aware of when the way you're feeling might be affecting other people. And, you know, there's just times when it's good to sort of know when to step back, I guess. British people or English-speaking people would like to play words. There are certain meaning in the... Aspect, in one aspect, but behind of the, this meaning, there must be some other meanings. So to be a foreigner, it's really hard for me to understand the other meaning, the, another meaning. But this is the charming part of, of English. And go back to Chinese. Chinese people will play words as well, but in a different, totally different way because there are two different languages and you will have different logical thinking when you use different language. One of my uh, culture shocks, if you like, was the transfer from a kind of a very chaotic city life to a very quiet university town. So when I made the move to London, it all kind of came back to me after three years in a very, in a very quiet and kind of serene countryside if you like. It's not really countryside but you know what I mean. Uh, and so the, when I made the move to London, the again, the the, the rigours of city life uh, again hit me hard. It's like the noise and the busyness. I mean like Wolverhampton's like 250,000 uh, city, you know, 250,000 people and this is, I don't know, 6, 8 million isn't it, something like that. Um, and it's just busy, loud, massive. <laughs> so I would say negotiating that, the noise and the business, yeah, I would say that's the, the big difference. Well, thinking back to what other people have said, and I pretty much agree, the noise, I pretty much became an insomniac coming here and that affected my mood both. Um, that I became depressed and I wouldn't leave the house and that was a sort of vicious cycle. Um, I initially um, couldn't sleep and therefore stayed up all night watching things, either doing work, not doing work, and then because I was too tired the next morning wouldn't go into university or had to drag myself out of university. Um, when I first started I was working and that was again tiring. Um, so you say what's the most difficult aspect? I think, yeah, the noise and keeping keeping up to date, keeping up to speed with everything because it it's so draining.
I think being here, especially in London, it's so vibrant and fast paced. I think sometimes um, it's very easy to shut yourself away. Um, and I know that I'm not very good at like asking for help if like I'm struggling. So there have been times when um, I've not been doing too well and because of how, um, just like the layout of the flat actually, um, it's so easily easy to separate yourself from everything, um, which isn't always a good thing. Sometimes you need to put yourself back into those situations to talk about it or get some perspective or even just as a distraction. But it's, it's really easy to seclude, seclude yourself and then you become lonely and it kind of makes things a bit worse and you know when you separate yourself for a bit too long you find it hard to like reorientate yourself with everyone like it's, it's really easy to become isolated in such a especially when there's so many people it's quite easy to feel like you're on your own um it is in many ways and i think uh it was it was difficult for me to make such a big transition and then immediately start in school um you know, maybe if I had come over a month prior to starting classes, it would have been a little easier. It's very difficult. Um, I love it here, and I, I want to stay, and I want to continue studying here because I really like the school systems. But I find the city, just city life in general, even though we live, you know, quite far from Central, just the city atmosphere is very tough on me. Um, I found that... Growing up in small towns sort of my whole life, and even from my undergrad in a very small city, I'm not cut out for extended living in, the, in a fast-paced environment, you know? Um, so do it while I'm young, but I, uh, it's, it's, it's tough, it's loud. I think London is very good for people to like expand their horizons and open their minds because there are so many different people here so many different cultures so i think i think it's good for someone to leave here for some time and just um you know see all that and experience what london has to offer i think the same i think i, sh I could spend more time outside meeting people and i could enjoy more of the university that i have i was truly living a dream i was yeah, at the beginning of the course and everything was new, so I was really, really happy. But I think we always have that feeling that we could have done more, so I think it's normal. The good thing about living with a shitload of people is it either, it either divides you or it unites you. And thank God it has united us, right? I think I gained a lot of uh, intercultural awareness and uh, cross cultural, deeper cross cultural understanding. I always had uh, this respect for someone's difference in culture, but now I feel that I could have in a, in a deeper level by living here, experience different people from all over the world, from different culture uh, backgrounds, and with different you know financial situations and aspects, uh, living and doing different things. Uh, I think I learned a lot by seeing and watching uh, those differences everywhere in London. Uh, and that also changed me inside of, I'm always uh, trying to take a step back before judging someone or, you know, having a preconcept of someone else because of their background or their they're coming from. Now I, I, I always get to know more the person and talk to them until I have a, a picture of what that person is or represents for me or, you know, in, 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 into this connection rather than have a preconcept of this person is from this place. So that's what he or she is. Uh, I feel that my con conception is completely different now. Oh, that's a person. Let's see the background, what the person has and everything that the person can, you know, uh, bring to my life and to this, this relationship. It, it's, it really changed me in, in a deeper sense, I think.